Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I have been having this discussion with my boss and my co-workers for the past few weeks and I thought I'd share with you some of the findings, some of, of the things we've talked about. So let's go. All right, so we've been having this discussion about cost optimization in the cloud for our subscriptions and all that stuff. And sometimes people think I can just snap my fingers like this. Oh, wait, what? Where am I? What is this? Free cloud? That's awesome. Free cloud. Oh, 30 days trial. Screw that. Oh, that's where you were? Free cloud? You were the, with the free cloud? Don't do that. It's just 30 day trial. It's not worth it. All right. Don't go hanging out with 30 day trials. So where was I? So yeah, they were thinking I could just snap my fingers like, oh, damn it, I did it again. Oh, why? <sighs> All right, let me, let me put that away. Okay, no, no more finger snapping. So we were talking about how we can optimize things and a lot of people think, oh, the cloud, it's a very easy thing to optimize and all that stuff, but it's not. It's not, it's a very complicated thing to optimize. For example, right now, one of the things I'm trying to optimize at work is storage accounts. Now, it may sound easy because when you think of storage at home or in a regular infrastructure, you think, well, it's just how much data you have stored. But when you move to cloud, then it gets a little bit more complicated because every single thing is a cost. Every th single action costs money. For example, if we have a hundred terabytes of data stored and we want to optimize the cost, it's not just as easy as setting a tier to be cooler so that such as cool or archive, because there's a lot more that goes into that than just having a hundred terabytes of data. You also have people reading data. You also have people writing data, deleting, or listing the whole directory. You have all these operations that cost differently. For example, at least in Azure for file shares, let me give you an example. The cool storage is 20% cheaper than the hot storage for just the data at rest, right? But then the cool operations are twice as expensive as the hot operations. So that means that, yes, in theory, if you go from hot to cool, you will save money. But if you do the same transactions as hot, you might actually end up paying more money by having a cool data storage than a hot data storage. Because all these transactions add up and they're twice as expensive in the cool side. So that's really the complicated things about doing cloud cost optimization is that you have so many variables that you have to optimize in order to get to a good cost and the problem is things change so you can't just say in the cloud that you will optimize the base metric of cost so for example cpu for uh, virtual machines data tier for storage accounts you have to look into every single combination of every single thing that is happening in your storage account, in your virtual machine, to truly optimize what is the best configuration to make it work. So something that for regular infrastructure would be a simple one parameter optimization becomes in the cloud a very multi-parameter optimization problem that you have to solve. And that's really what I call the dark side of cloud computing is that there's so many variables, there's so many ways of optimizing things. There's change over time that you have to keep up with. So many changes that if you keep up with them, it will, especially in the big cloud infrastructure, you could get to a full-time job of cloud optimization. You also have to take into account that you have to pay somebody to do that work, that optimization, and that it will change over time. And so in the end, is it worth it to pay somebody to do that optimization 
And of course, the simple answer is yes at the beginning. But over time, do you need to keep optimizing things? Does it is it worth it to spend time and resources on optimizing something to the the best of your ability when the gain becomes smaller and smaller and smaller? And that's a, a difficult question to answer because, well, in the time frame of one person, it's not a lot of money. But if you save a thousand dollars a year for a company, that's ten thousand dollars in ten years, thirty thousand dollars in thirty years. So that that's something you have to keep in mind. At the same time, you have to see that yes, we have cost optimization in one hand, but you also have performance optimization on the other hand. So you can't optimize performance and optimize the cost. They they're very like you either op if you optimize performance, then you have to then optimize the cost, and then when you optimize the cost, you then have to optimize performance, and so you get into that balancing act in the cloud of and I actually made a video about that you get into that balancing act in the cloud of trying to get like the best performance you can at the cheapest cost but at the same time because you have the cheapest cost you can have the best performance and so you just you're constantly trying to balance the cost with the performance and that's just <sighs> see that's just crazy, right? You can drive yourself crazy balancing all that stuff, and you're probably driving being cr driven crazy by me doing this. So imagine doing this your whole day, your whole job, trying to balance everything, trying to get the best performance and try to get the best cost. You can drive yourself crazy trying to balance performance and cost, and that unfortunately is the dark side of the cloud.